Variable rate technologies are based on the principle that not all fields are uniform and therefore crops should not be managed uniformly. They allow inputs such as fertiliser, lime, irrigation and pesticides to be applied at different rates across a field and are increasingly being used in vegetable production. VR applications are based on soil mapping with soil analysis or ground truthing to confirm which inputs are required and for accurate prescription map development. David and Will Wishaw use VR technologies to help them with their production of peas, beans, shallots and onions near Carrick, Tasmania. So we're currently using two sorts of variable rate technology. One is in variable rate irrigation and we've also just recently invested in a machine that'll map soil pH. And uh, since, since we're investing in that machine, we're now actually applying lime variable rate. We're trying to increase productivity with the area we've got and as far as the variable rate fertiliser or lime in our case was to try and even up the pH, we're finding that we've got uh, pHs as low as uh, low fives and as high as 7.2, 7.3 so we're sort of targeting a, a pH of somewhere between 6.5 and, and 7 and uh, with the variable rate uh, spreading and with the various uh, mapping we're, bit, we're we're working towards our goal. The Wishaws use Verus soil pH mapping to map pH variability across their fields. Based on the soil pH map, fields are split into management classes or zones. Lime application rates are assigned to each zone to form a prescription map. The VR controller adjusts production output according to the rate for each zone. Variable rate irrigation allows irrigation application rates to be varied in response to soil type and crop water requirements. EM38 soil mapping generally forms the basis for VR irrigation as it depicts differences in soil characteristics and this includes soil types. Irrigation rates are then adjusted based on each soil type. Jaco Power manages the irrigation at Perilla Premium in South Australia. Perilla produces carrots, potatoes and onions and has progressively installed variable rate irrigation across the dune swale terrain they farm in South Australia's east. We started about eight years ago when we identified we had some problem areas in our paddocks. There was a lot of water logging problems. So we do year mapping and elevation mapping to get to a, a basic irrigation map. So we, we put the two together and that's just a starting point for our, for our irrigation. So we use variable rate on the pivot. And then through the season we fly the drone and we check uh, plant health. We, we build data and our biggest aim was to get a better quality produce because we get more money for, for premium produce. So because we put water where we need it, we use water more efficient. And the old conventional pivot gives water in a straight line from, from the start point to the end. It gives water over, over heavy soil, over sandy soil. They all got the same amount of water. Now we can decide to put less on, on Lobby country and more on sand. So it make, makes it a bit more flexible. Key factors to consider whether variable rate technology is an appropriate approach include, is the variability large enough to be of economic concern? Is the variation caused by something that can be managed using VRT, such as nutrient deficiency or pH? Can the variability be clustered into zones of manageable size? Variable rate technologies target crop inputs to where they're required. This can result in reduced crop inputs, similar crop inputs applied in a more targeted way, or more crop inputs to achieve improved uniformity in soil parameters. Variable rate technology is growing a sustainable future, saving precious resources and allowing us to harvest a higher percentage of premium quality produce.